from being a security guard to becoming the most overstar in the whole roster. Let me talk to you. This is the story of the megastar many said wouldn't get far. LA Knight is by far the fastest rising star in the WWE. Attitude, flair, and raw unfiltered charisma. His magnetism and smack talk are the talk of the wrestling world. From Impact Wrestling to the WWE, LA Knight's journey is certainly captivating. Outside the ring, the megastar had a few small acting gigs. He appeared on The Rock's reality show The Hero in 2013 and had a small role in an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine in 2015. He also did motion capture for other WWE wrestlers in many of the WWE 2K video games. So what was the last 2K <laughs> game that you were a part of? Uh, a lot of the entrances, uh, a lot of the strikes and stuff. A lot of that stuff is me. So like, it's so funny. Whose game is it? It's LA Knight's game. That game is my game. After participating in a few WWE segments as a cameo, the future megastar joined WWE's developmental territory NXT in 2013. His in-ring name? Slate Rendell. Yep, his run was forgettable to say the least. During this run, he was squashed by the likes of Baron Corbin, Mojo Rawley, and Mason Ryan. He never got a chance to show his personality or promo skills. They saw him as just another guy on the roster and released him a year later in 2014. I think it's fair to say that LA Knight's first run in the WWE was a waste of time and a waste of talent. However, if you're a glass half full kind of person, that's the run that made him realize that he needed to find his own voice and his own style. Now if you thought LA Knight's story was one of overnight success, no, no. It was a bumpy and long road for the megastar. He faced many obstacles and dealt with many setbacks along the way. Because in life, nothing is handed to you. You have to earn it. Prior to the WWE, he had matches with some recognizable faces in other promotions, such as Kurt Angle, Drew Galloway, now known as Drew McIntyre, Scott Steiner, Alberto El Patron, and Johnny Impact. One fun fact you might not know about LA Knight's career prior to the WWE is that he actually has a past with the general managers from both brands. When he signed with the NWA in 2019, he was revealed as a surprise tag team partner of Nick Aldis, who's the SmackDown general manager. In the same promotion, he also lost an NWA World Heavyweight Championship match against then-champion Adam Pearce, the Raw general manager. He wrestled in promotions like Maverick Pro Wrestling and even went to Puerto Rico where he faced Carlito. Everyone knows Carlito. He's cool. He is, however, famous for spitting apples in people's faces, which is rude and unsanitary. But in his defense, he only did it to people who didn't want to be cool. Can somebody say Caribbean cool? He joined Impact in 2015, working there for years as Eli Drake. There he won several championships and became one of the promotion's top stars. One of his most memorable feuds was the one he had with Grotto, which included a memorable letter match in which Grotto's career was on the line. Among other Impact tales, in Kayfabe Land, Eli Drake sued Impact for an unsafe working environment after being attacked by Abyss during their rivalry. Can you blame him? Nobody wants to deal with hardcore wrestlers trying to make you bleed. No, no. What led to his eventual departure from Impact, you might ask? A controversial moment in which he refused to wrestle Tessa Blanchard because he didn't like Intergener Wrestling. After this, they fired him via email. Despite the controversial release, he reflected positively on his time at Impact and announced his free agent status. I wonder if they regret it now. In 2021, he made his return to the WWE and took on the role of a heel in NXT. Eli Drake was no more, however. No, no. His new moniker is one we would hear a lot for years to come. Tell him whose game this is! In 2021, the wrestling world buzzed as the newly resigned megastar emerged in NXT as the charismatic, cocky persona of yeah. The highlight of his NXT run was when he won the Million Dollar Championship after defeating Cameron Grimes, who was his personal butler for a while actually. He then dropped the title to Grimes after turning on his mentor, Ted DiBiase. He also faced Dolph Ziggler in a last man standing match for the NXT Championship and his chapter in NXT was closed after his final match there against Gunther. Then the moment finally came. Hi, hi. my name is Max Dupree. He was called up to the main roster which everyone was waiting for because he had the look, charisma and mic skills to succeed there, right? No, no. 
Well, theoretically, yes, but someone decided to name him Max Dupree and have him manage a group of male models on SmackDown. Oh, and Maxine. She was his kayfabe sister, Maxine Dupree. Okay, I want to take this chance to talk to you guys about a conspiracy theory I have. When something like this happens, I always wonder if these decisions are secretly genius long-term plans from WWE because they know the fans will get angry and scream LA Knight's name all the way to the main event, or if someone actually thought this character was the best they could do with him. Am I too naive? Because I really want to believe that no one calling the shots in a multi-billion dollar company is that blind. Anyway, thankfully he later turned on the group, I'm not sure this ever was for me. Yeah. And went back to his LA Knight persona. Yeah! Since then, LA Knight has become one of the most popular wrestlers in the company. LA Knight. Oh, here we go, Cole! Good standing as far as title contention goes. His popularity with the fans kept rising, even after losing multiple matches and being the bad guy. His exceptional promos, charisma, and captivating character work made him quickly earn the audience's affection and respect. The megastar started to get louder pops in early 2023. Despite his feud with the late Bray Wyatt, rest in peace, being written to re-establish the returning Wyatt as a monster character, Knight's ability to hold his own on the mic throughout the feud led fans to start siding with him. Their feud culminated in a Mountain Dew pitch black match at the Royal Rumble, which LA Knight lost. Since the reactions were undeniable, the WWE slowly turned him into a good guy in the following weeks. He won the Slim Jim Battle Royal at SummerSlam and also took on the role of referee in the NXT Championship match between Ilya Dragunov and Dominic Mysterio. From there, he kept the momentum going and had a star-making feud with The Miz, beating the A-lister twice with John Cena being the special guest referee in one of their matches. LA Knight and Cena's paths would cross again as he teamed up with John Cena to face the Usos at Fastlane. Now even though most people have been cheering him on during his rise to stardom, not everyone did. Many people have compared LA Knight to The Rock and Stone Cold. Many people have compared his gimmick and promo style to The Rock and Stone Cold. And what? Cosplay a redneck version of my cousin? The recognizable catchphrases and charismatic trash talking are a pleasant throwback to the Attitude Era. However, the same comparison has also been made in a negative fashion. Others feel he is copying their gimmick and catchphrases. One of them was Kevin Nash, who publicly dissed him on Twitter. OMG, Kevin Nash, WTF, thought he was dead, LOL. It's safe to say that Knight doesn't care about the haters because he knows they represent the minority and that the WWE's most powerful entity is on his side, the fans. He stated in an interview that he first noticed how fast his stock was rising in March when a crowd erupted during his entrance before he faced Drew McIntyre and Sheamus on SmackDown. However, according to the megastar, the office didn't seem to be equally as excited as the crowd. They made him lose a lot, even when he was supposed to win. They promised him a WrestleMania moment, but didn't give him one, even though the event took place in freaking LA. Seriously, how did they miss that? They gave him more promo time than anyone else for money in the bank, but sadly it was Damien Priest who won the briefcase. Many fans and critics have been vocal about what they feel is poor booking from the WWE regarding LA Knight's momentum. Even Triple H said he had to wait for his time to shine during the Money in the Bank press conference. I know LA Knight was a massive favorite coming in tonight. Great things come to those who wait, right? And, uh, and I think that that rise is just getting started. Which brings us to the present moment and his biggest feud to date. As I record this, LA Knight is scheduled to face the Tribal Chief, the Head of the Table and the WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns at Crown Jewel. I think we can all agree that the time is now. He's been working hard for two decades as a wrestler, and even though the megastar isn't old by any means, he's not getting any younger either. My opinion? Pull the trigger. It takes a strong mindset to keep chasing your goals even after 20 years of what many would perceive as shortcomings. However, the reality is, LA Knight knew that his time would come sooner or later. And when you have star power like that, it definitely won't be later. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as we enjoyed making it. If you did, Smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for more awesome content like this. Don't forget to comment below what you think of the Megastar. Is he the next big thing in WWE? Or do you think he's just a flash in the pan? See you soon! Yeah!